I-a luat pe toți. Vin și vorbim. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody's fine? Yes. <laughs> oh, I forgot to start my camera. Hello, Elena. Hi, hello. hello, hello. How's it going? How are you? Fine, thanks. A little bit sick, but anyway, going ahead. What happened? Well, <laughs> when you have uh, a child who is going to school, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> he brought some something from there. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> We uploaded all the lectures, except the introduction. Yeah, the introduction was very short and it was just about what we're going to talk about today. So we can skip it or just put it, it's just two minutes I, or something. Yes, so uh, we will add it later on to the channel and uh, we'll okay. change the order of the videos. So. Yeah, because of course the introduction has to be today and then the other words are from Wednesday to next month, Friday, Monday. Um, as I see our participants, maybe now it's the most um, uh, complicated period and everybody is busy with something. Because this is the uh, end, actually, of uh, I don't know, first uh, part of the semester. We were going to have some vacations, and probably they can have something planned, or I don't know why there are so few. But uh, anyway, uh, as we discussed previously, uh, afterwards, from starting from the end of January and uh, on they for sure will apply for your advices and they will watch this video on the mm -hmm. asynchronous way and probably will uh, come back to you with more questions, but through the platform. So uh, we will organize the, this link also through the platform in order to follow all the evaluations. Yeah, sure, there's no problem. Oh. Thank At you. Least, uh, we have uh, nine uh, viewers. Yeah, so we can start <laughs> okay. the session. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your participation. I started to watch uh, the videos as well. So I hope that our participants will enjoy it uh, as much as I did and wish all of you a very productive uh, lectures ahead. Thank you for this uh, introduction, very warm introduction, Elena. And uh, yeah, we'll, I'll try to make it a little more clear the, the goals of the, this module, because uh, uh, some of the um, uh, students or participants might have a, a lot of uh, uh, knowledge about how to do a photograph or how to or what they want to do when they photograph something. But uh, I think it's uh, this module is more uh, of in depth uh, about technology and aesthetic approach of photography, and not also photography, also uh, shooting videos. Uh, this introductory uh, meeting, uh, in during this introduction meeting, I will try to clarify the uh, all of the topics we're gonna uh, discuss through those uh, seven uh, courses. And if there's any uh, question, I, I would like to have uh, a little interaction if possible. 
because uh, if uh, even if any of uh, participants have uh, good cameras or uh, very good cameras, at least they make pictures with uh, smartphones or uh, different point and shoot cameras. So it will be nice to have a little um, um, dialogue about those topics and uh, terms. So looking at the, uh, the text, I wrote it a uh, long time ago, like, I don't know, three months ago. Uh, <clears throat> I've noticed there's uh, some of the, the topics might be very complicated for um, a newcomer in the photography and uh, shooting videos, but still uh, it's gonna be easy to interact and uh, talk about some of those uh, issues during the, um, uh, this uh, introductory module. So I, I would like to emphasize the, um, let's say the, the structure of uh, how the camera, photo camera or video camera will uh, uh, make the, the capture and the reciprocity with the, the camera obscura, which is the, the device, uh, uh, imagine uh, in Middle Ages, uh, sorry, in antiquity, by uh, 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 by Arab uh, mathematic mathematicians, which uh, also was used. The camera obscura was used in the uh, near Renaissance period by the the painters and the sculptors. Uh, also, the, the camera obscura and then the camera lucida, which is an application of the camera obscura, is the base of the, uh, the picture and the, uh, how the picture is produced within the photo camera and in the uh, video camera. So actually, it's, uh, there's a lot of similarities between how that uh, reality is uh, uh, projected on the retina on our eye or on the uh, sensor in the digital uh, camera or on the film in the analog camera. So there's a lot of uh, similarities. Uh, therefore, through that uh, small, uh, uh, let's say pupil like our eye, the image is uh, reversed and it's uh, uh, recorded on the retina or on the uh, sensor and then uh, processed by the, in our case, by the brain, by the cortex and uh, in the camera by the uh, digital processor or on the <clears throat> older, older times on, uh, on the film. Either it was uh, black and white negative or color negative. So the light getting through the lens was uh, exposing the, the medium, uh, either digital or analog. And then this medium was processed through uh, developing or processing through the uh, digital algorithm and uh, make it uh, a visible picture. So uh, therefore, by the, by the same time in, uh, in uh, the Renaissance time, uh, they've been, uh, let's say, uh, uh, implemented some uh, uh, harmonical laws about how to do the compositional rules regarding either uh, a painting or uh, and now die, nowadays uh, photograph and how these uh, harmonic uh, laws are uh, based on uh, some of the uh, mathematical uh, appliances like uh, uh, the golden number or the rule of thirds on uh, nowadays uh, video or photo cameras. Difference, the difference between those uh, approaches are uh, about uh, 
how to uh, make a, a balance or unbalanced harmonical or uh, disharmonical composition using the um, representations in um, uh, composition referring to the uh, uh, to the ratio we shoot on. The ratio means the uh, the aspect ratio of the format, which is uh, the height and the wide of the um, uh, format. So we can also uh, change this format after all. I mean, shooting in the in different format and then crop it, make it wider or square if you want, or shoot it uh, portrait and make it uh, landscape after all. That means we have to crop uh, in the... Uh, uh, the original composition and change the, the rules and the proportions uh, within. Uh, <clears throat> well, what else? Uh, in this uh, uh, course I wrote, it, there are some uh, pictures as well regarding the, how we feel some uh, uh, applications of this uh, Fibonacci sequence in uh, 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 the things we're seeing around us, like uh, the sunflower, the galaxies, and whatever, the, the, the shell, the shape of the shell in uh, how they were built and uh, look like. And then, I jump to the how the size of the uh, sensor will uh, make the depth of field look differently. This uh, size of the sensors, of course, it's a very abstract uh, uh, topic for uh, everyone who doesn't have any clues about how uh, imp how important this size of the sensor is for uh, the sensitivity of the medium and for how we call the signal uh, noise uh, uh, relation. The signal noise relations is uh, when we have a, a base ISO, which is the sensitivity we set it on the camera, and we're trying to make uh, with a fast uh, shutter speed, some uh, uh, and the wide lens uh, t stops, uh, some photos in the low light. So then, because these uh, differences between the sensors and uh, the size of those sensors, we feel the, uh, the differences on uh, blacks and whites and the. Uh, on the dynamic range of the medium. Dynamic range means the whole range of tonalities from the darkest black to the whitest white, which the camera can capture from one uh, uh, picture, let's say it. And this dynamic range is measured on uh, T-stops or on uh, 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 exposure index. Anyway, the T stops and the exposure index are the same things, uh, which is also the uh, aperture of the, the lens. <clears throat> well, I will share screen with this first. So this uh, graphical uh, uh, shows the differences between a full frame APS-C four thirds, one, one inch and two by the one by two by six uh, inches sensors. So the differences between those uh, sizes, it's uh, very hard to uh, fill it without uh, shooting on those uh, uh, sensors because 
uh, as an example, uh, the iPhone, I have it here, uh, it has a sensor smaller than uh, the black one. So it's smaller than one uh, by 2.6 uh, inches. And uh, this camera here, which is a Sony, has the APS-C sensor. So the differences between those two cameras, it's uh, by uh, 16 times the, the sizes of the sensor, which means the quality of the picture we shoot it on uh, Sony, of course, also uh, depends on uh, how old or, or new the, the camera is. Uh, it's uh, obviously very different than uh, in the quality, dynamic range, color rendering, and resolution. Also, uh, looking at this uh, uh, sketch here with the full frame APC and uh, up to the one by 2.6 inches sensors, uh, we can have in mind uh, a little uh, thing which says uh, sometimes we have similar resolutions for each sensor. So we have, uh, let's say, uh, a 2K for a full frame, and also we have a 2K resolution for uh, these small sensors, which means the, the pixels or the photosites are uh, extremely small on the smaller one and are extremely differently and bigger on the bigger sensor, which means the bigger sensor is going to have a better uh, uh, signal to noise uh, relation in uh, in the uh, in the picture they they capture. Uh, also, the um, uh, this uh, uh, I'll try to pause share and stop. Okay. So also on this. Um, uh, relation between the size of the sensor and the quality of the picture. Uh, there's also uh, a question of how um, specialized or good the, uh, the uh, camera processor is. So we have different camera processors and uh, one of them is, uh, one of those are newer, the others are older. But the quality uh, uh, overall, it's uh, influenced by the size of the sensor and uh, uh, dynamic range. The biggest the sensor, the dynamic range also is bigger. Uh, we sometimes, uh, we don't really care about the dynamic range because the dynamic range, it's a kind of uh, subjectively factor. We, we notice when we look at a, um, uh, at a picture, and that means the highlights or the brightest uh, whites are sometimes uh, uh, clipped, which means we don't have enough information in the whites just to see better how the um, the highlights are uh, resolved in the in the picture, and also the uh, the blacks and the darkest blacks are also uh, crushed which means we don't have enough information also on the lower part of the uh, dynamic range uh, area. <clears throat> so the, when the dynamic range overall, it's uh, not so big, um, uh, the picture it's uh, lacking the, the tonal perspective, the tonal perspective and also the, the chromatic perspective uh, means the, uh, the whole range of colors and uh, tonality which the picture uh, can show after the, the camera has captured the, the image. So sometimes uh, we feel this uh, lack of uh, dynamic range on the, the picture we, we take it because as an example, if we uh, make some picture in the, in the winter and uh, uh, the ground is covered by snow and uh, there's a very uh, sunny day, uh, the picture has a very big dynamic range. The dynamic range means the totality of the, the brightness and the darkness in the, in the picture. So for this kind of uh, 
shots, we need a camera who covers and uh, resolve all this uh, huge dynamic range we will uh, face in this kind of situation like uh, uh, winter with snow on a sunny day or even uh, summer with the uh, sun, uh, I don't know, uh, at a beach with a white sandy beach and uh, a blue sky, whatever. So uh, the dynamic range, it's, uh, it's uh, a topic which is very important when we capture either photographs or shoot uh, an image. And uh, also the, uh, this kind of uh, uh, cameras, uh, the most uh, performant one are of course the most expensive one. So getting um, further on with this uh, uh, the uh, composition, the composition, and uh, how the um, the lens and the focal length, it's uh, uh, changing the the perspective we're looking at. Uh, it's also uh, a factor which uh, it's uh, related with the size of the sensor. So also this uh, uh, kind of uh, approach with uh, bigger sensors and uh, uh, focal length. It's uh, also influencing the depth of field of the camera. The camera depth of field, it's that, uh, uh, let's say the, the portion of the, the picture which is in focus uh, in comparing with uh, which is uh, a soft focus or uh, the blur background or foreground. If we, we use, uh, uh, smaller depth of field or bigger depth of field. This uh, uh, function is used uh, usually in uh, um, commercial photography or uh, fashion, and as well it's used uh, intensively used in uh, uh, feature films and movies, where the um, uh, the depth of field it's uh, sometimes very narrow, so. Uh, all the rest in the, in the composition, except the, the actor or the action where you want to shoot it, uh, it's uh, soft or blurred. So in a way, it's, uh, it's an easy and very uh, usual way of uh, drawing the attention to the attention points or the action points where the viewer or the spectator has to look at. And it's a very... Uh, used in both uh, mediums, photographs or uh, movies. Then talking about, uh, well, let's do even further to this uh, kind of uh, approach because we have uh, an example here. Sorry, if it's, if you have any, if you have any questions, just please uh, say it and I will try to uh, clarify if it's something unclear. If not, I'm going on. It's clear up till now. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's a good news. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I will share a screen again with uh, some uh, examples of uh, how the uh, the field of view of the lens can influence the how the reality it's showed in the. Uh, in different approaches. So I will zoom in here, I think. Let's try to make it a little more bigger. So there's the same environment. And on the same environment, I use three different lenses on uh, my uh, Sony camera, uh, which are 1800 uh, and 200 lens. So we're on the, let's say, on the whole range of the uh, lenses and focal length. The 18, which is the wide lens, of course, the, the left of uh, the, the picture of the left. In the middle, it's uh, 100 mil, and on the right, it's uh, 200 mil. So uh, talking about how we perceive the, uh, 
the reality around us. It's related with the focal length we used to have in our eye. Uh, uh, judging this focal length regarding with, uh, uh, let's say, similarities with this uh, uh, APAC sensors, we uh, get around uh, 45, 50 uh, mil lens. So we're more, it's wider than 100 mil, of course, it's uh, twice as uh, wide. Uh, but this is just an example of how the reality and how the space uh, we're trying to shoot will uh, show when we use a wide lens, uh, a pretty tight lens, and a telephoto lens. Uh, These uh, three pictures have been made by changing the position of the camera regarding the distance from the camera to the first chair here. So I'll, uh, I've tried to make a similar sizes. It's not really similar because an 18 being a wide lens is changing the, the perspective and the, uh, how the size is shaped. But also it's kind of, let's say similar the, uh, sizes of the uh, first uh, armrest, let's say. Uh, so the differences between uh, those three, it's uh, obvious. We have a different uh, field of view, left and right, up, up, down, for three of them. And also, it seems like the distance between the chairs is being changed through the uh, three pictures, which is not uh, real, of course. Uh, no one changed the, the distance between the, uh, the shots. I've just changed the distance between the camera and the focal length. So the space we see here, it looks uh, bigger and uh, more, we have this kind of approach and we feel uh, the composition has more depth in the white lens uh, picture and it's uh, compressed in the, the middle one and it's very compressed in the uh, right one, which is a, a telephoto lens. As an example, I then I try to make a crop from each of those uh, pictures uh, by shooting with an 1800 and uh, 200 lens, but then uh, not changing the, the position of the camera. So if we look at uh, the center of the composition, which is not uh, the same here, because here I've changed the position of the camera regarding and in accordingly with the, the, the dimension of the first chair here. Here, I didn't change any position. I just shot it on 1800 and 200 and then cropped into the picture kind of the similar position. And now you can see the, the relations and the distance between the chairs doesn't change at all because the position of the camera the, didn't change as well. So one of the, the rules when we see uh, and we want to see different uh, perspective is uh, if we want to really feel the differences we have to change the camera position in order to uh, give a different feeling in this uh, uh, kind of environment and uh, I will uh, stop here and show you there's also a visual effect which is pretty strong and it's uh, called uh, dolly zoom and uh, is not uh, used to be made in a photo because it's not such obvious effect in a photo but in video is very powerful and it's very uh, used for let's say important uh, moments in the in the film so I will show you one of those examples. Let me just um, find it. So this effect was first used by uh, uh, wait a second, I just look at right here. <laughs> 
by Hitchcock in uh, Vertigo in 53, 1953. And then uh, it was also used in a Romanian movie made in uh, 66. And it was called uh, Transtrav. So traveling is the dolly and uh, uh, trans is coming for uh, uh, the zoom. The, um, I will show you now the, the effect in, uh, in an American movie. It's been used uh, all over the time from the uh, Joes, the Spielberg's movie, to the most recent ones like this one I will show you now which is uh, called uh, uh, Road to Partition. It's a uh, Sam Mendes movie, not so recent, but it is recent. So this is the effect. Look at the, the pillars, how they move. So it's, a, it's kind of the same effect like I've showed you in the pictures. Uh, but it's done in, in a movie. So imagine the, I will show you again. I will take out the subtitles. Sorry about it. <laughs> It's better because we see more of the picture. So it's more or less kind of the same effect like uh, I showed in the picture. It's just on a dynamic uh, example, it's not a static one. So if you look at those pillars here and the distance between the first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth, whatever, you you they look like they're, the distance between them is uh, changing, like uh, getting bigger. So that's the perspective uh, changes, but it's not uh, real. It's made optically by this uh, uh, dolly zoom move. It's kind of nice and uh, interesting uh, application. Anyway, let's get back to the, the course. Well, so how, how's the, there's a rule of doing any breaks after 50 minutes or we'll keep it going for two hours or three hours or four hours hmm? anyway no well i'll keep on going so then um talking about uh, how how we um, uh, look at the pictures and how we uh, try to make the uh, the content uh, or at, at least make a meaningful content for uh, uh, the viewer. It's uh, a difference how we place the uh, the character or the the action we want to show. Uh, in in the composition of the area, which is going to be easier to see or easier to understand quicker as possible for the viewer. The difference between uh, the photograph and the, the video uh, uh, stream, it's uh, the time we look at the, at the picture. On the, on the photograph, we can look at a picture, uh, how long we want to look at it. On the, the video stream, we can look at a one static picture, let's say a one static uh, frame uh, for that time that the, the director or the, the editor wants to uh, edit. So sometimes there's a, a, 
uh, there's a cut with um, a short uh, uh, edit with with a short uh, cuts. So the frames and the, the scenes are are cut on the short duration um, um, uh, frames. And sometimes there is a long uh, uh, scene which is uh, cut in one uh, frame and it might take uh, one, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes or even longer. There's an example in the uh, film history, uh, Andy Warhol, the famous uh, uh, American artist uh, from 1960s, uh, made a, a movie, an eight hour movie about uh, Empire State Building. So he shot a static frame of the Empire State Building starting at uh, uh, the afternoon and uh, finished up on the next morning. Uh, of course, it was, um, uh, it was very provocative about it. And he just showed one uh, movie with, uh, with a building uh, within which uh, nothing happens. Like, like pressure, it's just the top of the building, and it's uh, just uh, eight and eight hour and fifteen minutes uh, at the same building uh, shot for um, <clears throat> the whole duration of the movie. We're not talking about those kind of uh, shots. Of course, the difference is, is uh, how we can um, judge or see the details within the photo composition. Uh, comparing with the uh, film or movie composition. So the big difference between those uh, is uh, this uh, time we take or allow to look at the uh, photo composition uh, in uh, comparing with the, the movie we we'll look at without uh, stopping or um, uh, fast forwarding or replaying the, the scene we just uh, have seen. Okay. Let me just go now for some um, photo examples. I will open some um, files here and we will talk about some of the compositions here, which are uh, based on how uh, this kind of compositions are made and which is the reason for this uh, approach. Mm -hmm. So there's some pictures of uh, Bruce Davidson, which is an American photographer from uh, 1960, 1980s. And some of the pictures have been made in uh, Italy or all around New York and San Francisco. And uh, it covers all kinds of topics from uh, ratio, like this one here, to nature or industrial uh, uh, approaches. Of course, the, the differences between these uh, are very big because um, when we look at the, at the photographs where, uh, let's say, the, uh, the meaning of, of this one is not uh, making a, a nice picture with an olive tree. I think this is an olive tree here, and it's made in uh, either Greece or uh, Italy. Uh, uh, I think the, the reason why Bruce Davidson made this picture, it's um, uh, of course relating or uh, shooting two uh, ancient, uh, uh, let's say, vestiges like 
this uh, temple here and an old olive tree. And on the same time, keeping and catching the, the reality of the, the days he, uh, he made his photograph on. So there's a car in the background and the kid running around here. So sometimes the, the meaning of the picture, it doesn't really show for the, the first time because when you look at it, example for this one, we look at the tree, we look at the, the sun uh, hiding behind it and the light effect and the shadow of the, the sun and uh, so on and so forth. But then uh, keep on uh, investigating the, the composition. We noticed those um, little things which I already told about the, the, the kid here and the car in the background there passing by. Uh, the, the shutter time of this uh, composition, of course, it's a, a long one because we see uh, how the, the trees and the, the leaf are uh, blurred because of the, the motion blur. And uh, of course, all the, the grass around it's uh, on the same uh, uh, paradigm. Here, being in the, most of the, the pictures are black and white, not because uh, on the time uh, in the uh, 1960s, uh, Bruce Davison couldn't make it uh, color but uh, I think he found it more interesting to make it uh, black and white because of the tonal contrast and uh, uh, how the uh, differences between, let's say, those two characters here are better shown on uh, black and white <clears throat> differently than in color. Uh, what would a color uh, add to this picture will more or less uh, uh, distract the, the eye. Why? Because uh, let's imagine this uh, cafe had uh, uh, green walls and we see this pillar here being green. Outside one of the houses uh, mustn't be in red or uh, yellow. So inside the composition, he would have a very high color contrast which distract the, the viewer to the uh, details which he, he should look at. So that's why sometimes uh, the, uh, uh, the photographer choose to make uh, a black and white picture uh, and now not a, a color one, like we'd expect to, to have uh, in some uh, uh, photographs. Some of the photographs, of course, they are uh, made in uh, different circumstances. He had uh, uh, this uh, uh, sideshow circus with which he uh, walk around uh, the America, and he had a very nice uh, series of uh, dwarfs <laughs> and uh, actors within this uh, sideshow circus uh, walking around. Talking about the composition as well and uh, the atmosphere and uh, the attitude, this is also an example of how the composition uh, can be very uh, randomly uh, captured, like this, of course, it's a, a snapshot it's not a very well composed uh, picture, but uh, it says uh, something about the attitude and how uh, the time and the, the atmosphere of the time has been uh, captured on uh, and between the uh, youngsters and uh, uh, how they, the people have failed in the, let's say, uh, doing a picnic or kind of uh, relaxing around. <laughs> uh, this is a very nice uh, expression of uh, how uh, people have been uh, doing this kind of relaxing. Uh... Okay. Again, uh, on the same uh, 
series of uh, sideshows, pictures, and uh, having those uh, characters, the dwarves from the, the circus, he uh, made it further on with uh, one of the, the characters following uh, through the uh, shows and then uh, doing like uh, uh, regular stuff like uh, eating uh, dinner or lunch, whatever, and capturing the atmosphere of the uh, cafes or uh, restaurants he'd been, uh, he'd been wandering around to with, of course, all the characters uh, uh, doing whatever they've done it in uh, those kind of spaces. Again, one of the, the compositions, which is not uh, a landscape like the one we've just seen it uh, till now, uh, this is a totally different uh, composition, which is a, a portrait. And, uh, uh, he, I think he, he chose this format because he wanted to make a very, uh, a, a, he, he wanted to, to show a big space with a small kid in, uh, in the bed. And um, his uh, status or uh, uh, how he feel about the, the space he's been uh, living to uh, regarding with the, the texture of the, the walls uh, and the ceiling and how the, the floor is looking. Uh, and uh, of course, the, uh, how the, uh, the kid is looking at, uh, at the photographer as well. Sometimes in a composition, we don't need to show people or uh, figures or living uh, whatever animals or flying birds. We just want to emphasize the re relations between shapes and uh, textures. And this is a good example of how the shapes and the textures are uh, shown because it's obviously a very distinct uh, separation between the upper part of the composition and the lower part. This is an uh, exterior uh, uh, cinema where the, there's a drive-in cinema where the people that just drive in and listen to the headphones here. And uh, it shows the, the differences between how this part and the composition is showed comparing with the, the upper part where the, uh, the houses and the, the, the greenery, the trees are uh, changing the, the texture of the, the upper part uh, comparing with the lower part of the, the composition where the, the space is more neat. We have, uh, let's say, those kind of uh, different plans of the, the compositions, which are uh, organized differently than uh, comparing with the, with the background here. Another example of uh, how, how the texture and uh, the perspective is shown in the in this uh, uh, photograph is this uh, photograph in, uh, made in uh, New York. I think it's Harlem. Uh, this uh, set of photographs uh, that have been made in uh, 1960, 1970s. And of course shows the, uh, the people uh, living in these uh, areas. So, uh, as, a, as an example of how uh, the photographer uh, think about composition is uh, how we thought to emphasize the subject of the photograph without showing uh, bigger elements on this uh, whole uh, uh, front of the building, except three people here talking about something and uh, grouping a lot of people down there, which are uh, referring to the contrast they are very on a high contrast um, uh, comparing with the other ones uh, on this uh, uh, front of the building. The whole area here, which is a surface now, it's um, uh, judged by the uh, texture and it's a repetitivity on uh, how the windows are look like, how the uh, uh, the character of the each window is shown and how the top of the windows are uh, 
uh, uh, referring here. Again, uh, what else? Uh, this one maybe about a uh, couple of people wearing uh, in the middle of the uh, industrial uh, landscape and how the contrast is also important here because we have a big difference between the white dress of the, the bride and all the environment here which it's also uh, a very high contrast between the sky which is uh, grayer than the this uh, white dress white and the black here so that uh, this is an example of uh, uh, high dynamic range uh, picture with uh, a lot of contrast and uh, uh, resolving uh, uh, details <clears throat> also on the same uh, uh, series of pictures uh, back to Harlem uh, 1966 uh, people and uh, around uh, guys uh, walking. Well, let's stop the share and get back to the main topic of the composition. So <clears throat> talking about the composition, and then I'll, I'll get back to the reciprocity factor, which is the base of the how we judge and uh, decide to make a picture uh, in order to faithfully represent what what's in what is in, in the composition. So the composition, of course, can be made in uh, uh, different shapes as a uh, aspect ratio. The aspect ratio, as I told you before, is the relation between the width and the height of the, the composition. And of course, in the two versions, which is landscape, the horizontal uh, aspect, or portrait, which is the vertical aspect of the same uh, environment, let's say. The reason to uh, make it a uh, portrait or uh, landscape, it's of course really related with the, the compositional rules and the meaning of the, those uh, objects which uh, are seen in the composition. So uh, sometimes we need to, uh, to emphasize the, the quietness or the peaceful of the uh, of the environment, let's say, it. and we need to do a landscape on a wide aspect ratio. Uh, but sometimes we want to confine some of the uh, compositional elements within a, a, a square uh, uh, aspect ratio or in a portrait aspect ratio in order to make it uh, differently shown like I show you the, the composition before with the, the bride, the couple. Let me try to do that again. Wait a second. Something went wrong. I'll try again. So let's go back to the uh, this couple here. <clears throat> of course, we can easily say it. Uh, this is a composition which uh, can be easily done in uh, in a portrait, yeah. Because if we try to zoom in, we have to imagine how this composition we're going to look like in in a portrait or tighter so sometimes we um, think maybe it will be better to do a tighter composition because the relations between the people or between the people and the, the background will, will show will be uh, better emphasized in a tighter composition than in a wide one also regarding the 
the things I've just said. Uh, this is a, a classical composition where we can see, okay, it will be easily be done in a, in a portrait uh, version, yeah? So if we talk about the people and not the environment they are being uh, uh, shown in, uh, we can easily uh, just make a composition without any background. I mean, those this kind of uh, factor in the background and uh, smoking, uh, whatever uh, steam or the things are getting out of these um, uh, uh, towers. Uh, but then the the meaning of the uh, the relation between uh, them as a uh, as a couple and the environment they are shown on uh, it will be totally different of course the uh, the strong uh, message of this uh, this picture is about uh, their poverty and uh, how they feel uh, uh, surrounded by this uh, environment which is not uh, uh, neither healthy or wealthy, but there are, uh, there are a couple that just started their journey in the, into the life and that's the, the environment they are live on. So uh, the photographer doesn't want to separate uh, the time those guys uh, they've been lived on to the, the environment and the uh, the space uh, which are uh, uh, clearly showed here. So as well with uh, a lot of different compositions uh, uh, like this one. Of course, this is a, this is a composition which is, uh, 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 it's done in a portrait uh, uh, because the composition itself uh, it's uh, going to be better shown in the in the portrait uh, uh, format, in now not in the landscape. But anyway, we can uh, also change the the meaning of the the picture by changing the uh, this uh, kind of uh, let's say meaning of the the aspect ratio. If we zoom on this one, which is a portrait and get to the a landscape like this one, of course, the, uh, the feeling and the, the loneliness of this character is not shown as in before, because here we feel the whole space and the relation between uh, the interior of this uh, laundry or whatever it is, and uh, the lady uh, who's looking at the photographer uh, here in the, um, in the picture. What else? Nothing more here. <clears throat> so these compositions and the, the, the role or the, the meaning of uh, making the uh, a composition landscape or a portrait of course it's uh, it's up with uh, with uh, the artist the photographer or the videographer to uh, shoot it differently uh, on the videos uh, a little bit complicated because we have the standards which is from hd to square or even 19 by 6 uh, 9 by 16 which is a vertical aspect but uh, those are very, very different, uh, different approaches for making a picture and a meaningful picture uh, to the, uh, what we want to uh, shoot it in a photo or video aspect. Okay. Next. Uh, the contrast, or uh, as I uh, mentioned before, is not only the contrast, because we have two different kinds of contrast. We have a, a, a tonal contrast, which means the densities and uh, the brightnesses we capture in this uh, dynamic range aspect or topic. And we have uh, different contrasts, which are uh, uh, the color contrast and the meaning of the color contrast, 
uh, within the composition. Uh, talking about the, the tonal contrast and the contrast between the darkest black and the whitest white, of course, there's a overall contrast, which is uh, uh, like in every environment, uh, it's uh, controllable or uncontrollable. And of course, it's the, the lighting contrast, which sometimes defines the, uh, the mood and the, uh, how would say, the, the intention of uh, how we want to uh, shoot or show the, the character in the, in the photograph. Uh, so, uh, the lighting contrast is defined by the differences between uh, the key light and the field light. The key light is uh, the one which defines the, the direction and the, uh, the volumes of the, the portrait, let's say it. And uh, the differences between the, the key light and the field light defines the uh, contrast range of uh, the picture. I will show you some uh, examples. And of course, uh, there's a uh, different types of uh, lighting uh, portrait. These are also uh, taken by uh, from the the courses I uh, wrote it. Um, <clears throat> this type of uh, 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 key light, which is called Rembrandt style, because uh, the famous uh, a Dutch painter Rembrandt uh, used in uh, his paintings very often this kind of uh, triangle on the, the opposite cheek of the uh, key light uh, direction. And from that on, he was called uh, Rembrandt style uh, lighting. So we have this uh, kind of the same. Uh, uh, lighting contrast, which means uh, on both uh, examples, we don't have any fill light added. The differences between the, those two pictures are the, uh, the quality of the light. The light on the left picture, it's uh, a harsh light, which is a very defined, it gives a very defined shadows on the face of the the character and the other one is a very soft one. So uh, the, the light itself has uh, at least four characteristics, which is the direction, the intensity, the quality, which is harsh or soft, and uh, you know, the color. The color is uh, the, that uh, uh, thing which uh, relates with the uh, uh, the white balance, which there's a topic I will uh, talk about later. So getting back to the light, of course, we can uh, uh, easily uh, imagine which are the differences between those two kind of uh, lighting styles. When we imagine uh, a bright uh, sunny day in the summer, which of course has this kind of harsh uh, uh, style, so the sunlight is very harsh and it gives uh, and makes very uh, distinct uh, shadows and uh, uh, differences between light and shadow. It's very neat. And of course, uh, the second uh, example, which can be uh, imagined like an overcast day where the shadows are very soft and uh, the differences in the, the shadow gradient, it's a big one. Yeah, so the shadow is not very defined, like in this example here, is very soft and the gradient is very big. So that's the big difference between harsh and uh, uh, soft uh, light quality. And of course it says about, uh, very much about the, the size of the light source. When we use a pointed light source like this one, or a soft light source like uh, the one on the right. Uh, so as I said, it's, uh, there's no differences between uh, 
uh, this uh, contrast uh, ratio between key light, which is the, the light uh, which is uh, uh, from the left here, and the fill light, which uh, gives the different density to the blacks, but is just uh, adding a little soft uh, uh, filling of the right uh, portrait without doing anything else. So the position and uh, uh, the intensity, of course, is different because any uh, things which will soften the light will uh, reduce the intensity. But then the, the surface of this uh, soft box, which is uh, us usually uh, used in, uh, in portrait uh, uh, pictures, uh, is made this uh, soft uh, shadow uh, uh, environment, <clears throat> which is very uh, different than the, the quality of the light on the left, which is very harsh uh, comparing with this one. So talking about the contrast and uh, the, the things which uh, the contrast will be uh, emphasized in the, in the picture, uh, this uh, tonal contrast uh, has been, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, has, has been um, used and uh, uh, theoretically uh, made by Ansel Adams, which is an uh, American photographer from uh, 1930s, 1940s. Uh, which defines these different uh, uh, areas of uh, uh, tonal uh, uh, separations from pure white to the black. And he defines those uh, zones like uh, Ansel Adams zones, which are 10. So somewhere in the middle here on five, we have uh, the middle of the uh, exposure. So the exposure uh, and the dynamic range are two uh, linked uh, uh, topics because the dynamic range can be very easily changed by uh, using uh, the exposure of the, the medium. That means if we underexpose or overexpose, we uh, will, we will um, compress the areas in the blacks, if we uh, underexposed, or in the whites, if you overexposed, compromising the other the other areas as well. So, if we overexposed, we compromise the all this area here, and where all the blacks will gonna be uh, a change uh, with uh, as a density uh, by lightening the uh, the black area. On the other way around, if you are underexposed, the pure white will become texture like gray, and we don't have the um, uh, pure white uh, in the in the picture. Therefore, the the whole dynamic range is going to be compressed by changing the uh, exposure of the the uh, photograph or the video we're going to shoot at. Uh, getting back to the how. Uh, the ratio, the lighting ratio will uh, emphasize or influence the, the look we're, we're trying to or we intend to, to make it. Uh, it is, of course, as I told you before, the, uh, the light has those four characteristics, which is uh, uh, direction, intensity, quality, and the color. And uh, uh, saying or taking uh, each one of this characteristic and judging as a direction and the quality, we can also change the, the mood of the scene like we see it here in these uh, two frames. This uh, composition here, it's a, a low key uh, mood. And in the low key mood, even if the, uh, the quality of the lights are not uh, always uh, Harsh, like we see here, there's a very soft uh, light. Uh, the differences and the 
the uh, quantity of the the uh, dark areas uh, regarding and uh, balancing with the with the bright areas of course are in uh, uh, are more blacks and uh, uh, lower uh, grays uh, than whites on the other on the other hand when we go on a high key uh, mood uh, of course overexposing a bit the the whole thing like you see it here uh, the feeling is totally different we don't really feel uh, a certain direction. There's no uh, 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 key to fill ratio here. There's no uh, lighting contrast. There's very overall uh, lighting, which is um, giving this impression of uh, very uh, transparent whites and no blacks. So looking at uh, this Ansel Adams, uh, zone system we can say uh, uh, the low key uh, approach has everything in the in this uh, zone system we have white and we also have blacks but the proportion between blacks and uh, very dark nearly black and white it's uh, mostly in favor of the the blacks uh, than the other one around so we have couple of areas which is uh, uh, bright, all the rest are very black. On the opposite, when we look at a high key approach, we can see all the densities in the pictures are uh, uh, close to the middle gray, which is, which is the lowest uh, density in the picture. And of course, all the rest are going to the pure white and uh, uh, specular highlights, uh, as you can see here. Okay, so this kind of, uh, I was saying about uh, this reciprocity factor, which is uh, at the very beginning of the, the course, I will get back to it, because it's important to have in mind when uh, we have a camera and that camera has two, uh, three things to think about it, yeah? So that's the ISO, the sensitivity of the camera, the shutter speed, and the uh, aperture, yeah, the shutter speed here, the aperture here. So those three factors uh, are um, very linked when we try to make something uh, in the composition and this composition will be uh, sometime extremely different when we use a different exposure time, a different aperture, and the different uh, ISO. What does that mean? So uh, sometimes, as I already gave that example, we want to uh, do on a shutter, uh, a very short shutter speed, a picture with a um, uh, wide uh, uh, aperture of the lens, which means being uh, very wide on the lens, like. F1, that's the T-stop here, F1 or 1.4, we have a very shallow depth of field on the lens. Also, the compensation between exposure time, shutter speed and uh, uh, aperture can be done only in between those. So we have a fixed ISO, let's say 800, and on 800, on the given uh, uh, exposure time, like 125, we have an, uh, a T-stop eight. If you want to go higher on the exposure time, every doubling the number here will uh, have in the, will do uh, the same thing on the uh, aperture. So uh, changing the shutter speed from 125 to 250, we're gonna to have to change the T-stop from eight to five, six, and so on and so forth. So 504, 1,000 to eight, we can go 2,000 to, we can go 400 to 4,000, one, four, and so on and so forth. Sometimes we don't want to go uh, on the aperture that wide because of those problems with uh, uh, shallow depth of field. And we want to, uh, change the uh, ISO, getting higher or lower, uh, depending on the uh, environment we shoot. 
just to change the exposure time to getting on the long exposure time, slow, slow um, uh, shutter speed, which means as the as an example I showed you from um, the Bruce Davidson, the first uh, picture, uh, uh, slow, uh, slower shutter speed uh, will uh, uh, influence the, uh, the motion blur. The motion blur is the uh, because in the, in, the, in the composition we, we might have some things which are moving, like the leaves on the tree in that picture I showed you before. Uh, those uh, leaves are uh, uh, are shown uh, blurred or in moving around. So the exposure time, because it's uh, a very uh, slow shutter speed, will uh, record different position of the leaves during this uh, uh, shutter speed, like one by four, half a second, one second, and so on and so forth. Uh, the best example of this is uh, the longer shutter speed on uh, uh, night scenes when we shoot, uh, let's say, uh, on the uh, longer shutter speed uh, uh, night scenes like uh, uh, cars passing by or uh, whatever lights uh, moving around and we'll see just uh, uh, lines of uh, headlights or uh, uh, stoplights uh, on the streets and uh, nothing else. So the cars itself are disappearing because being a long uh, exposure time, short speed, we don't record the, uh, uh, the car itself, we just record the trail of uh, lights uh, during the, the longer exposure time um, mode. So this uh, reciprocity law, as I uh, said before, uh, works on uh, where or when we want to use uh, a specific uh, aperture on the lens, let's say a wide, uh, uh, T-stop, and we want to compensate this T-stop through sensitivity, ISO, getting lower or higher, or the exposure time when we want to, let's say, do something or a very short exposure time, like uh, freezing the moment on, the, let's say, sports or waters, water splashing or uh, different kind of uh, uh, pictures we want to show on a very short uh, exposure time uh, shutter speed. <coughs> Sorry. Well, this is uh, how uh, the visual spectrum, the, the light, it's uh, captured and it was standardized by um, at the beginning of the last century in 1931 by um, uh, an organism which is called uh, Commission Internationale d'Eclairage. It was uh, based in Paris, that's why it's in French. And it's an uh, international commission of uh, uh, eclairage, which is a term about light. So this graph here on the left, shows the, uh, the uh, light spectrum, the, the uh, visible spectrum of lights from 380s, that's uh, nanometers, the, uh, uh, the spectral length of the uh, color. So that starts on uh, indigo blue, 380 nanometers and goes up to 700, which is the red. Before 380s, we have uh, uh, ultraviolet uh, rays, wavelength, and after the 700, we have infrared. So this is the visible spectrum. And those are the, the colors which are included in the visible spectrum. The, this phenomenon was uh, uh, discovered by uh, 
uh, Newton in uh, 1666. And uh, by doing uh, a diffraction through uh, uh, optical prism, he obtained, uh, let's call uh, the rainbow colors, which are the colors from the uh, visible spectrum, which are shown on this, uh, uh, let's say, graph here. The other color, which is uh, in between red and blue, which is not in the visible spectrum, is magenta. Yeah, the magenta is not a color which exists itself in the visible spectrum. It's a composition color uh, made by combining red with blue. In the similar uh, uh, proportions, we have a full magenta, which is in the middle of the uh, uh, thing here, or we have a reddish magenta or bluish magenta, which is as we go closer to the red or to the blue, the magenta tint is changing to this extremities. Now, talking about the colors, uh, inside this uh, visible spectrum colors, we have, and not only inside, as you can see it here, we have the uh, color spaces of the medium we're gonna shoot on. So either photos or uh, videos has the uh, three angles in inside this uh, visible spectrum and they are related with the properties and the specification of uh, uh, each medium of uh, a part. Uh, for the video, we have uh, those uh, Rec. 7 online for HD uh, television. We have a P3, which is the digital project projection, and the Rec. 2020, which is the HDR television uh, for uh, the one who already seen the HDR uh, image uh, uh, that's very bright and uh, different uh, contrast and color uh, rendition uh, comparing with the standard definition, so standard dynamic range on HD signal. So talking about the colors and the colors as they are uh, uh, produced in uh, digital capturing, uh, we have this uh, uh, extremity of this uh, 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 horse shape uh, uh, graph, uh, which shows the on the extremities here, we have the tint of the colors. Yes, we have also uh, the saturation, which is the it's linked to the white point. The white points are those uh, points here on the graph. This is a Kelvin uh, a value of the light, which is 3,000, 4,000, 6,000, 10,000, and so on and so forth. Uh, as an example, on uh, 1700 here is the candlelight uh, uh, color temperature. 3,200 is uh, uh, tungsten light. Uh, 5,600 somewhere here, it's uh, daylight. And 6,500, which is next to the 6,000 here, it's the uh, HD and uh, uh, digital projection um, uh, in cinema, a white point. So this white point here, it's uh, important when we use light sources like tungsten or daylight, or also the LED lights, which are very uh, uh, used to you uh, I mean easily to use because they have a, a dimmable uh, temperature starting for 2000 to 10,000 let's say it, depending on the manufacturer and also uh, the other uh, parameters which you, you can uh, uh, adjust on the LED lights it's saturation so the, the intensity of the, the hue and the hue itself. Yeah, so the hue, you can change the hue. I will show you later. If you have time, I will show you how uh, LED light will uh, operate on saturation and hue and brightness because we also have the brightness, yeah, so intensity. 
So uh, these color systems, which are related with uh, uh, additive or subtractive uh, uh, system, uh, have each of those has a um, uh, color space which uh, defines the uh, the total colors which that uh, 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 capturing devices can um, uh, show after all. So as you can see here, the, the color space is on Pro Photo, which is the widest one. The uh, next one, it's Adobe RGB and uh, uh, Super RGB, which is the smallest one. Those are in the photo. In the video, there are different. There's no point to show you the uh, color spaces in the video because it's all about photographing here. Anyway, <clears throat> what else? White balance. I, uh, I already spoke about, uh, yeah, the perception and uh, the color space. There's an, uh, let's stop sharing. There's an interesting, uh, an interesting thing about uh, color space and the perceptual world because in the digital world, we have um, different uh, sensitivity of sensors uh, comparing with the human eye spectral sensitivity because in our uh, capturing system on the uh, eye retina we have uh, uh, two types of uh, cells cones and uh, uh, roads the roads are uh, specialized on the night vision and the cones are specialized on the uh, day vision and there are three types of cones specialized on blue, green, and red uh, uh, light uh, waves. And they're, as you can see it here, they are placed in a different position than we expected. So uh, red peak sensitivity is very close to the green one. The green, that's the... Uh, uh, the length of the uh, the big green, which is 555 somewhere here. Uh, the blue it's around 430, and uh, the red it's uh, almost 580. The digital camera specifications shows a different spectral sensitivity, as you can see it here, which is uh, smaller for green, bigger for uh, blue, and a little smaller for uh, uh, red. This difference is be because the, uh, the sensors are uh, balanced for daylight, which means they're more sensitive to the blue than to the red. And also in the structure of the, uh, the sensor, I will show you a different picture. We have um, uh, two green pixels, one blue and one red, which is this kind of, architecture. So if we look at the four pixels here, this is the base of the digital capture uh, algorithm. We have two green pixels, one red and one blue. And through the algorithm of the, the capturing, uh, when we um, uh, recover the, the information uh, through this algorithm, we uh, uh, the software of the camera and uh, the processor of the camera interprets how much green in its, uh, it is in these uh, red pixels by making uh, a medium uh, value between those three pixels and this one. And there's a uh, mathematical algorithm, which is um, uh, the, in the camera processor who uh, make this uh, uh, approximations very close to the reality, let's say, and we uh, 
at the end, the, the colors and the contrasts we've uh, seen in the, in the reality, they're, they're close to the, the one from the pho photographs. Okay. So this is uh, on a very short uh, introduction, the differences between human eye spectral sensitivity and digital camera sensitivity which are based on these uh, uh, algorithms and uh, uh, approaches from uh, uh, the manufacturer, because the camera manufacturers, the sensor camera manufacturers are uh, all doing this kind of sensors with uh, uh, two green pixels, one red, one blue. And uh, further on, either uh, each of those manufacturers, they're trying to uh, get the best from uh, uh, processing the image and getting back to the, let's say the reality, applying uh, the so-called LUT, L-U-T, which is uh, lookup table. The lookup table are the, uh, the presets which uh, each camera uh, is applying on the, the raw uh, material because the raw material is very uh, without any contrast and it's lacking um, the uh, colors and the, uh, let's say the, the saturation of the, uh, the scene we, we shot. So that's why when we look at the pictures made with, uh, uh, with, a, with a smartphone, so inside this uh, algorithm, uh, we have loaded a lot of uh, uh, LUTs. So if you go on the photographs and the, uh, the camera itself, you can change it from a portrait or uh, whatever time-lapse and this kind of uh, different things on each uh, settings on the on the portrait let's say we have uh, settings which uh, change the the appearance of the uh, environment by changing the let's say the settings we have here either if it's uh, this is not a very uh, new iphone we have natural light studio light contour light which adds a little more detail uh, backlight to to the portrait if the person or a portrait it's uh, detected within this uh, composition we can change the the feeling of the depth of field by adding a blurry background or uh, different other um, features and uh, therefore this lot which I told you about, it's um, uh, a feature which makes the, uh, the picture look very, very nice, let's say, because uh, 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 it shows the uh, very saturated colors and uh, high contrast and uh, uh, a very kind of pleasant picture of the environment we already shot on. Okay. What else? Why balance? The composition, let's get back to the composition because I will forget to tell you something about the composition. There's uh, not so much time left. Uh, so in this uh, kind of uh, make, let's say an order through the, the composition, we have uh, those uh, different kind of norms uh, which are telling about how we can balance or unbalance the composition, how we can judge the positive or the negative space in the picture, and how to compose uh, relating with um, a golden ratio or uh, uh, the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds, it's uh, uh, using and it's used uh, uh, intensively in uh, uh, today photography and uh, video composition. Uh, in my opinion, it's not very uh, 
let's say pleasant regarding the how we can feel and judge the uh, forms and volumes and uh, uh, different uh, uh, compositional uh, contrast and areas but it's uh, it's a trend and it's a very popular uh, way of uh, compose uh, photographs or uh, video taps and the other one it's uh, uh, the golden ratio which is the one i already told you about it's uh, coming from the antiquity uh, uh, Pythagora uh, and uh, Archimedes then uh, discovered it and uh, uh, thought there's something wrong about this number because it doesn't say anything uh, uh, useful like the other uh, irrational number does it, like uh, the P, the, the one which is involved in the, uh, finding the area of the circle. This phi, which is uh, 1.1680, and it's being irrational, goes uh, to infinity in uh, 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 numbers after the, uh, the dot. Uh, doesn't have any, let's say, reason to be except this um, uh, proportion and uh, uh, section and uh, numbers, which is is called uh, the golden number and the, and the golden mean. You can find all the information on the internet if you search on Google golden mean or golden number or golden section. And is also a relation between uh, this golden section and uh, the number uh, discovered in the antiquity and uh, Fibonacci sequence, which is also uh, a way of uh, making the same kind of thing through uh, through some numbers, which Fibonacci discovered in um, around uh, 1500, close to the uh, Renaissance era. Okay, getting back to the, the position and the intensity of the key light and how the texture and the contrast is shown even if the uh, key to fill the ratios are uh, uh, totally different. I will show you some um, examples here on uh, how the differences and the direction could change the feeling of the environment where you shoot on. So I've showed you this low key and high key. And here we have the same environment in the same um, studio. The difference is between those two. It is the key to fill ratio, as you can see in the, on the face of the character. We see on the darkest part, more details on the left and less details on the right. Uh, and also the differences between how the background is lit on the left and on the right. So uh, having a bigger contrast on the right doesn't necessarily say uh, the picture is going to look better. But he, or here on the left, we have more details on the, on the portrait. And we also have some textures and um, uh, different contrast uh, <clears throat> uh, values on the background. So we have this uh, light effect on the on this um, uh, furniture here. We have the curtains and uh, the light effect, which uh, light the curtains. On the right, we don't have this uh, texture on the background, but we have a bigger contrast on the on the character. Uh, sometimes we want to, let's say, emphasize the, the subject by changing the, the lighting structure from the background to the foreground. And therefore here, uh, the right picture shows a different, uh, let's say, uh, levels on the, on the character, on the subject uh, 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 structure, comparing with the background. Uh, as a 
let's say uh, uh, everyday approach, like how we can see the, the environment uh, within or inside a, a daylight lit room, uh, we tend to see more close to the reality, the one on the left, and more, let's say, aesthetically uh, approach the one on the right, which is not uh, my uh, approach, but uh, it's one of the examples. Changing the direction of the light and the contrast will totally change the feeling of the uh, uh, environment and uh, uh, the time of day we're trying to uh put in, in in the composition so on the left we have the same daylight uh, example like the both are made in in the studio so the character it's sitting on the same position and it's relating with the same objects around him and the perspective it's shown similar but the feeling is totally different because we uh, on the right there is that this lack of uh, uh, three dimensionality because of the contrast is missing and we don't have any texture in the background and the, the direction of the light on the character is different and the contrast is also different. So only by changing the direction of the, the light and uh, changing the, uh, uh, let's say the relation with, uh, with the background contrast, like we see it here on the left, uh, it will change the, the feeling of the whole environment like uh, we've done it here. And also uh, the, um, the quality of the light can uh, uh, also emphasize either the relation with the background or the, uh, how the, uh, the character or the, the subject it's uh, uh, emphasized in both pictures. So, <clears throat> Here we have uh, a mixed uh, uh, quality of light, which is some of uh, the, the, the portrait, it's uh, lit in by uh, uh, soft light. The value and the intensity of here, it's lower than here. So we have a bigger intensity of uh, soft light here, but we also have an added uh, uh, harsh light on his chest and on his uh, chin, which also makes a little difference in how we feel the uh, the mood of the the scene inside his uh, interior daylight uh, regarding the uh, how we can feel uh, the reality of uh, the left uh, environment mood. Uh, comparing with the right one. So sometimes, and this is also uh, very common in the in photography uh, portraits, it's uh, like uh, very uh, used uh, the, uh, the soft lights because the soft lights are uh, uh, of course, softened the, the skin tones, and uh, it's more uh, uh, making a more pleasant look on uh, uh, the subject, either if it's uh, a girl or a boy, doesn't matter. Of course, uh, if you want to make a photograph to someone who pays for that, uh, he wants to look uh, nicer than in reality, not uh, on the opposite. So. Uh, there's going to be a good um, approach to use uh, soft lights uh, and not uh, hard light to make him uh, make his face uh, look like uh, wrinkled and uh, I don't know, uglier than in reality. Uh, the composition, uh, as I told you, it's uh, also uh, ruled by some uh, norms. And uh, as close as we get to the to the character, we need to take care of the uh, headrooms or uh, directional rooms, like uh, head nose rooms and so on and so forth. I will show you some example here because it's uh, much easier to 
show through examples. So, of course, there's uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, composition we can use in uh, photograph or video. Uh, as close as we can to the to the character, we need to pay attention to the headrooms or uh, uh, the direction the, the character is looking at. So that uh, nose rooms, as uh, I told you. Uh, because uh, the, uh, the headroom, it's important when we judge the, uh, the harmony or uh, uh, the balance or the unbalance of the composition. Sometimes it's important to uh, give the, uh, the character less headroom and place the the eye line over the this uh, midline of the composition. Why? Because as you can see, it's comparing the two pictures here. The one of the left looks more pleasant than the one of the right because there's a more negative space around the uh, character, and the character looks more like um, uh, let's say oppressed or. Uh, not so well like in uh, on the uh, left one. So as a compositional rules, uh, I apply not the rule of thirds, like I told you before, here and here, there, uh, the, the rule it's the, uh, the golden ratio is not uh, the rule of thirds. If you draw a line here, you can separate this composition into a square and, uh, and the rectangle, which is the uh, golden rectangle on the right here. And here the same, the square and the rectangle on the left. Anyway, there's some uh, rules you can uh, uh, check it on the, on the internet and define it more than I told you here. There's some uh, examples here as the differences between rule of thirds and the uh, golden uh, mean. So the red is the rule of thirds and the uh, blue it's the, the golden ratio and as well here. So this is the rule of thirds. And this is the golden ratio on the different aspect ratios. Yeah, so the, the compositional uh, uh, places are different in uh, those two uh, examples, the rule of thirds or um, uh, golden ratio. Getting back to the, the headroom or uh, the nose room, like I'll show you here, uh, as close as we can, uh, we get to the, to the character, this headroom uh, changes in the sizes. Yeah, so as you can see it here for a close up, the, the headroom is very small uh, uh, because uh, there's a, uh, let's say, an aesthetical approach to how the composition is uh, made to have on the close uh, composition, the eye line uh, above this medium uh, compositional uh, line and not below or uh, overlapped with it. Because uh, that means, as we can see it here, uh, the headroom is uh, totally unbalanced on the right example, comparing with the left one. And as uh, uh, further on, if we uh, compose a character on the full figure, uh, cowboy shot or medium, this is cowboy shot because on the time of the uh, Westerns, uh, the directors and the DOPs have uh, this kind of composition to show the, also the, the guns uh, of the cowboys and not cut it here without the, uh, the guns. That's why it's called cowboy shot. So this is the full figure. As you can see, the, the headroom is different here than here and here, and of course, and here. Uh, so also there's an, another compositional rule which says it's uh, it's wrong to cut on uh, uh, ankles or uh, intersects in ankles or uh, seeing like uh, 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 the 
the character is um, uh, uh, having a problem with the limbs, like cutting on the uh, knees, ankles, uh, whatever, here or here, or even uh, on the neck without having the uh, shoulder line in the frame. So that's also another um, rule. And uh, the exterior or uh, the lines in the, in the composition, they, uh, they don't have to intersect or be in tangent to the head or uh, limbs or uh, the other uh, visible uh, parts of the character in the composition. Uh, also, there is an, another uh, uh, this uh, rule of the loop room. So, if we want to compose, uh, let's say, as uh, the row with a character looking in a direction, if we compose it like that, we have also a lot of negative space behind this head. So, this is uh, it's it's an area which doesn't have any relevance relating with uh, with the character and the direction he's looking at. Sometimes if we want to uh, say something different about the character, we can compose it like that, but uh, uh, the meaning has to be very uh, strong to make this instead of this, because uh, uh, everything is in front of the character can be seen by the character, everything which is behind him uh, can't be seen by the character. So sometimes we want to show something that the character doesn't have to uh, see it or it's not able to see it. And I'm not talking about uh, horror movies or uh, uh, who knows different kind of movies, but sometimes we want to make uh, a relation between something which has happened uh, and the characters doesn't see it. And sometimes that's the reason why this kind of composition is made instead of this one. Okay, what else? We still have uh, nine minutes. The depth of field, as I told you, it's, uh, it's uh, also, uh, A value which is uh, related with uh, sensor size and uh, uh, lens, the uh, the value of the focal length. Sometimes on the wide uh, uh, aperture. We can have this kind of uh, very thin uh, and uh, shallow depth of field, and therefore sometimes we uh, don't see or catch or feel the um, texture or the the volumes of the background because the depth of field is so uh, shallow. Uh, in in the movie, as I told you, there's a lot of uh, moments where. Um, uh, the director and uh, uh, the DOP uh, wants to shoot on this kind of shallow depth of field because they want to emphasize the uh, difference between uh, the uh, uh, the action uh, plan they were shooting the character and the background. And sometimes they want to uh, make this separation very uh, 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 clear. And this is one of the, the ways of doing it uh, very clear. So shallow depth of field and um, the position of the camera regarding uh, the proximity to the character or the difference and the distance to the character it also influences this uh, depth of field. And uh, sometimes this is used as uh, emphasizing uh, the relations and the differences between the character and the, and the background will, will show in the picture. Okay, what else? 
uh, a lot of those uh, topics are uh, uh, shown in the in the course and the photography module I wrote it and I will get now at the end of the this introductory module to the white balance which is uh, uh, one of the uh, the values we need to <clears throat> have in mind when we shoot a color photograph of course on black and white doesn't have any meaning but on color we have to uh, make the or uh, adjust the, the parameters of the the scene accordingly with uh, the uh, the values of the white balance of the camera so these are uh, uh, roughly the uh, the color temperature in kelvin the lord kelvin's or lord kelvin uh, uh, says the first one uh, he terrorized the the value of the this uh, value regarding with the uh, emitting uh, warm or cooler light and it's called uh, the black body uh, emission it's a physical term anyway if we warm this black body uh, curb it will start to emit uh, light uh, from this kind of uh, value so 1500 it's candlelight 3500 it's uh, uh, tungsten 3200 is tungsten, neutral is 4500, cool it's uh, 5500, which is close to daylight, daylight is 5600, and um, uh, 6500 it's uh, ultra daylight, cold ultra daylight, but it's, uh, it's a cold uh, uh, white uh, balance temperature. So when we put it on, uh, and I will show you on the, on the video, I shot it for uh, emphasizing this kind of uh, values um, uh, adjusted by the camera because we have uh, <clears throat> uh, different and multiple uh, waves of uh, adjusting the white balance in the camera. We have uh, tungsten, which is uh, 3200. We have daylight, which is uh, 5300. We have neutral 4500, and we have uh, automatically white balance which automatically white balance uh, shows and uh, render differently the, the colors uh, and uh, uh, the values of the, uh, the colors uh, within the composition. So there's a very important uh, uh, feature of the um, capturing the, the image because uh, relating with this uh, white balance, we can uh, get to the um, uh, an effect uh, picture, which uh, I can give an example. If you want to shoot uh, and photograph a sunrise on the sunset, you want uh, you won't put the uh, the white balance on the automatically. You just put it on the daylight because. The warmth of the the sunrise or the sunset it has to be shown because otherwise if you put it on uh, automatically uh, the camera uh, it's adjusting the uh, the atmosphere the the redness of the sunlight and make it more neutral which change totally change the the atmosphere of the day on of the time of course and uh, this is not uh, of course the the way of doing the, the sunset or uh, sunrise uh, pictures. Uh, so sometimes we need to uh, make this uh, difference pretty big because uh, uh, the balance uh, and the uh, temperature of the, the sunrise and the sunset, it's close to uh, 3,500 uh, Kelvins. So it's pretty warm. And the difference, this difference between 3500 to 66, uh, 5600, it's uh, uh, shown on this uh, 
orangey red uh, atmosphere of the sunset or of the sunrise. So this is was just a, a simple example of how the white balance it can be used in uh, everyday uh, photographs and uh, not uh, using the uh, uh, the automatically white balance of the camera because that will might spoil the, the atmosphere and the, uh, the meaning of the that moment of the day, either if it's a sunrise or a sunset. Okay, Oof. so nice meeting you today. We'll see each other Wednesday. We still have 35 seconds to go or something. And uh, please uh, look at the video, which is uh, not the introduction. Uh, it is um, something about, I don't know what it is. It's loaded on the, on the platform. Uh, some of the videos are shorter, some of them are longer. That's why it's useful to uh, see them before uh, uh, the class. Because if you have any questions, it will be easier to uh, interact, uh, make an interactive uh, class during the, the lesson. OK, so thank you all. And uh, see you next, uh, I mean, next, the day after tomorrow. <laughs> have a nice evening and uh, good luck to all your uh, works. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Jay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>